For over three decades, Kampala has resisted submitting to the National Resistance Movement despite the overt and covert attempts to change the status quo. Besides being the capital city, Kampala is a commercial and political hub of Uganda. Kampala also has its attractions, having been ranked the best and least expensive city to live in in East Africa by Mesa in its 2020 cost of living survey. Since 1986, Kampala has had seven mayors, with the NRM having an undisputed run of only eight years, from 1989 to 1997, when Christopher Iga was at the helm of the city. The other mayors have included Fred Semaganda, who subscribed to the Uganda People's Congress, the Democratic Party's Waswa Ziritwaula, Nasa Antege Sebagala, John Sebana Chizito, and Arias Lukwago. Until recently, most local council positions in Kampala were held by the opposition. But in a surprising turn of events in 2018, the NRM won the majority of the votes in the lower local council elections in Kampala. For instance, in the opposition stronghold of Kampala Central Division, NRM won 120 of the 135 cells. This change in fortunes is attributed to a new behind-the-scenes people-centered strategy that is putting musicians and bloggers who are popular with the youth in the political trenches. This strategy is championed by people like Balam Barugahara, a businessman and music promoter. It would only be politicians who would, go to, who would reach out to voters. But currently, even people are not in politics. We have learned our responsibilities. Civic education has been very, very vital. They have now taught us how to speak our mind out. I should not shy away from telling the world who I support and the reason why I support. In Kampala, there is always an undercurrent of tribal identity politics. Although one does not have to be a Muganda to win the top elective positions, it is an advantage. That's why it is common for aspirants for office, especially mayor, to show their closeness to Mengo, the city of Buganda Kingdom. Mengo has been careful not to appear to endorse specific candidates, although Dr. Paul Mukwaya, a university don, who in June 2020 co-authored a paper about the contested dominance for Kampala, says Mengo has a stake in Kampala's politics. The central region by and large is Uganda region. And uh, their best representation is the Kabaka, who sits in Kampala city whose uh, government is in Kampala city. And it's therefore incumbent upon any politician, even at a national level, that uh, they have to receive the blessing of the kingdom. Of course, Uganda must have a stake in Kampala, because Kampala is the seat of Uganda. So, Uganda should get interested because to protect also its interests. If they are not, then that's, that's, that would be surprising. By 2018, Kash had become President Yoweri Museven's biggest weapon against Kampala, a double-edged weapon used to enrich a few individuals or starve the city of service delivery. <laughs> During the term of Jennifer Msisi as Kampala Capital City Authority's first executive director, the government poured billions of shillings into the authority's coffers, at one point almost amounting to 600 billion shillings. Some say this was meant to staff the Lord Mayor's office of the means to deliver on election promises. But the electorate did not budge, and the 2016 elections further entrenched the opposition in City Hall. Imam Idikasozi, who was an elected local council leader in Kampala in 1986 and 1987, and has since followed political trends, says the NRM has woken up to reality, hence the new executive director working with a much lower budget than her predecessor. Because, for example, it is not only the, the Lord Mayor that he is the handicapped, divisional mayors, okay, they even have a department of finance that is unfunctional because it does not receive any funds. So uh, I think the whole idea is really generally malice. 
The acrimonious relationship between the elected leaders and the technical team has not helped the NRM because even with the Lord Mayor failing to deliver, the population still overwhelmingly votes opposition. You know, service delivery needs a lot of talking, a conversation. People must speak, even when you don't agree on certain things politically. And if one group is doing things without the other, there will always be that question, how accountable are they? The battle for Kampala has given rise to the Minister for Kampala, a political office with no direct impact on the lives of city dwellers, but a very powerful office when it comes to NRM countering the opposition. Indeed, political pundits say the Minister for Kampala is NRM's ace card in taking over the city. In most cases, the, most of the ministers they have brought for Kampala are not capable enough. We don't need a minister for Kampala because Kampala is part of our local government. The local government can still handle that work effectively. All these are just power centers. Power centers don't mean anything to people when they have nothing in return. Since the last election, the president has pumped huge amounts of taxpayers' money into different artisan and youth groups in Kampala's poorer neighborhoods. There have also been efforts by State House to skill youths. A group of activists and mobilizers like Jennifer Nakangubi, or Full Figure, who some consider unsavory, have taken precedence over party functionaries, all in a bid to win Kampala. But will these advisors and the financial muscle shown so late in the day yield political capital for NRM? I don't think they are on the, they are in touch and in tandem with the community. Um, they could make some uh, assistance and support, I wouldn't really know in which perspective, but I've not seen the um, um, impact at all. Full figure has a following. And. Uh, in all political debates, in political games, you're looking for a following. Wherever that following is, look for it. Either you co-opt or you give them material benefits or funds or anything for as long as you're capturing that constituency. Even with a disunity among the opposition, it is still clear that the opposition candidates command a large following. What is the NRM's strategy for taking advantage of this disunity? Let's take the council, because Kampala decisions are made in the council. Fine, uh, his, his lordship, uh, Lord Mayor um, Elias Lukwago, may be strong to overturn, and so that the mayor is, is, is FDC, but then the councillors are NRM, so the councillors will sit always in a meeting and decide. While the NRM easily sailed through the local council and youth elections, taking charge of City Hall is another matter. The NRM will have to play a tough game of Russian roulette, balancing the COVID-19 restrictions and countering the opposition's populist politics. But in the end, the politics of populism always wins Kampala. Gillian Nantume, NTV.